Grace and peace to you, friends. My name is Pastor Scott, and I am privileged to be part of a group of pastors putting together a devotion called Extraordinary Connection. In case you didn't come to this video by way of our website, we are a group of United Methodist clergy from across the state of Michigan working together to create a series of devotions and stories of inspiration for our congregations and for anyone else that might find their way to our group. Our website is extraordinaryconnection.org, and we will post a new video or blog or some nugget six days a week to feed your soul. Now, since this is my first one in the series, I wanted to share that I am currently serving at Vassar First United Methodist Church in Vassar, Michigan. We're located on the I-75 corridor up in the Thumb area of Michigan. And if you're interested, we do stream our services every Sunday on YouTube, and if you're ever visiting, we'd love to meet you. So today, I want to talk about the contributions of a woman named Mary Lindley Murray. Do you remember her from history class, right? Probably not. I don't think she ever made it into any history books, but her humble contribution single-handedly changed the tide of the Revolutionary War and saved the Continental Army from a very early defeat. Now, for reference, at the time of the Revolutionary War, the British Empire had the strongest military in the world. They had more ships, more guns, and their soldiers were some of the best trained and best equipped soldiers the world had ever seen. We, on the other hand, we were not. We were ill-equipped, and we were mostly farmers, and we had no navy to speak of. The colonists were nothing more than an unruly mob compared to the British Empire. Britain wasn't too keen on the colonies leaving, and they sent their army and navy to squash the insurrection led by General Washington. We drafted the Declaration of Independence in July 1776, and by August 1776, England was ready to deliver their reply. And Britain brought their entire, almost their entire fleet, 400 ships, into New York Harbor. And they also brought nearly 32,000 disciplined, battle-hardened soldiers and conscripts. Now to compare that, that's over twice the number of colonists Washington was able to recruit. And most of his soldiers had never seen a battle before, and some of them had never even held a gun before. The colonists had 36 cannon total to fortify the forts and positions in the harbor. And the British, on the other hand, had some sh single ships with more than 100 cannon on board. It was incredibly lopsided in terms of resources, in terms of firepower, training, you name it. And a fun bit of trivia to impress your friends, the Battle of Long Island was the largest battle of the entire Revolutionary War. So with this incredible force coming in, the colonists, as you can imagine, didn't do very well and were quickly run over by the British and they were forced to flee across the Hudson River into New Jersey. Panicked and fleeing for their lives, the British forces, led by General Howe, gave chase. Because if the British could rout the colonists and capture them, then the war would be over. It was literally an all-or-none situation for the colonists. Now, as the British were giving chase, they passed by the home of a Quaker woman named Mary Lindley Murray. Mary was a sympathizer for the colonists, and in an effort to buy them just a little bit of time, she invited the British generals in to her home for tea and cakes and wine. The generals, being the men of honor that they were, and being so very confident in their certain victory over the Continental Army, accepted Mary's invitation and stayed with her for about two hours. Those two hours were long enough for the colonists to get away, regroup, and to live and fight another day. Mary Lindley Murray single-handedly kept the war going for the colonies. Her small act sent ripples that are visible today. We each here in the United States owe our independence, 
freedom, liberties, and our citizenship to tea and cakes. Because without Mary, the war would have been over before it started. And as I'm sure you know, the Bible has other stories of individuals who their small acts of service or kindness or gentleness made a big difference in their communities and in history as well. Now, in Luke 21, Jesus observed a widow giving her offering at the temple. So there was a little wooden box, and the faithful would go forward and put in whatever they could to support the temple and the priests. Some givers would make a show of how many coins they put in to impress anybody that was looking, but the widow's gift was more humble. And so this is Luke chapter 21, starting at verse 1. Jesus looked up. He saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. And he also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Now, while this story doesn't say... I like to think those two small, small copper coins went on to make a huge difference in the lives of so many. Because with God, it's never about the size of the gift we offer. It's about how our humbling, giving, and love-filled heart that he uses to change the world. In the next few days and weeks in our quarantine, and even in the days to come, we will all have opportunities to do small acts that will send ripples out into the future by checking in on a neighbor, by calling a loved one, by staying indoors and controlling the spread, our small actions of love and kindness will literally save lives of those in our community and all of their descendants to come. Each of us have an opportunity to be like the widow and give the humble bit that we can. Each of us have the chance to be like Mary Lindley Murray and do our small, simple act. Our small acts of compassion and love will bring hope, they will bring healing, and they will bring life. We each have the opportunity to put in way more than we even realize, because God always multiplies our love and kindness into ways and on a scope that we can't even imagine. So as you're stuck in your house or your apartment, or if you're watching this video after the stay-at-home order has been lifted, never miss an opportunity for a small, simple act of kindness and giving. It makes all the difference. So God bless you, and I hope to see you again online at ExtraordinaryConnection.org.